there is something wrong with Mary, okay? There is very little that's right going on in this lady's head, in her life. Is she a demon possessed? Like, I mean, read to find out, but the fuck? Hold on. I need to take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, which is the ever lovely Book of the Month. Book of the Month is basically an online book subscription service where their team vets through hundreds of new and anticipated releases and then pairs it down to about five to seven different books that they think are the best of the best and that you should really have your eye on. That way you can do more time reading and less time researching. And a couple new things the Book of the Month is doing is that they have recently launched a podcast called Virtual Book Tour that's available on Spotify and Apple. But I'm sorry, I've been burying the lead. The best news is that they officially announced that they're going to start shipping to Canada later this month. I was like, y'all are fast. That is so fast. And the other things I'm very excited about is the books that I chose for this month. So we have Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. And this is the author of These Violent Delights, which I really enjoyed. And this is the start to a new uh, historical fantasy duology. But let me tell you, let me tell you the freaking highlights of this book. So it's in 1930s, Shanghai. We have historical, we have fantasy. Oh my God. But not only than that, this is following two ill-matched spies who basically have to pose as a married couple so that they can try to go out and investigate a series of brutal murders. This has every buzzword for me. I'm so excited. And then look at this cover. This cover is stunning. This cover is stunning. And this is a debut author. And this book doesn't come out until October 25th. What? Okay. This is about our man Peyote Trip. I can't make that up. His name is Peyote Trip. Okay. And he literally works in hell, literally works in hell. Okay. And basically if he gets one more member of the super wealthy Harrison family to sell their soul, then he's going to get a huge promotion. And this is supposed to be like a really darkly uh, humorous, action-y like story about him going out and trying to get one of the members of this family to sell him their soul. I'm excited. I'm excited. Like, look at these. Are these not stunning? I know they give off very different vibes, but I'm so excited. I literally can't wait. Thank you so much once again to Book of the Month for supporting me and supporting the bookish community. I really, really thank you so, so much. And let's get back to the video. Hey, what's up? Hello, it's Katie Coulson here. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. And today we're doing a video for Mary and Awakening of Terror, which is the Smut Salon book club pick for the month of September. Now, Jordaline is the one who recommended this book to me. She was sending me like countless Instagram voice messages being like, listen to this passage. I'm going to read you a quote and tell me you don't want to read it. And she was like begging me. It was like 2 a.m. She was like, please read this book, please. And I was like, okay. I love passion. I will take it. This, as far as I know so far, it is like the floppiest shit. I can't even. And the chapters are also not very long. This is about our girl, Mary. And basically we start out the story with a bunch of women that have been murdered over the last couple of years. And they're all found with pillowcases over their head. And the pillowcases are all bloody. And it's almost like he's hiding their identity. So you start the story with the birth of Mary, while at the same time in the same town, this guy, this monster who's killing all these women is found and then he is killed. So he dies and then Mary is born. Now, Mary has lived a very, you know, innocuous life. Like she's just passing her time, trying to be invisible. But then when she's about to turn 50, every time she looks at herself in the mirror or looks at any woman that is around the same age as her, she sees them decomposing. Like they look normal for like half a second and then they start bloating and like caving in and it's disgusting and she'll just pass out. And then she can't sleep. Like she can't sleep. She can't eat. She's angry, emotional. Like there's just all this shit going on. And all these doctors are telling her that she's just perimenopausal. It's textbook. And she's like, there is something wrong with me. There is something legit wrong with me. I need an exorcism. And like nobody's listening to her and she doesn't have good health insurance or health insurance at all. So she goes back to the old house that all of this took place in because she's going to take care of her aunt and shit starts going on. Shit starts kind of replicating itself from the first mass killings. And you have to read on after that to see what fucking happens because what the fuck? Okay, sorry, I don't want to spoil anything. Let's just jump right in because... 
Good Lord. We are beginning this vlog by taking a very lengthy trip, little road trip to a Barnes and Noble that's like 30 miles away or something. I don't know. It's going to take me like an hour to get there, but it is the only one in a hundred mile radius that says that it has Mary by Nat Cassidy in stock in the store. Everywhere else, they don't sell it. I'm like, what? Like, I need this to be accessible. And the only place I can get it is Amazon. And I'm like, listen, let's just go on a little road trip because I spent the last two hours of my fucking life or two and a half hours. It was a long time. Um, transferring my dryer's door, like reversing it because the way that it opened, it like trapped me inside my laundry room and pantry. So I was like, I was trying to fix it. And oh my God, was it difficult? It was difficult. And I was like looking up a bunch of, um, videos on YouTube on how to do it. And I got it done except for one screw. I could not get to go in. Like I could not get it to screw in. And I just eventually just gave up and whatever. So hopefully, um, my dryer's fine. <laughs> we'll see the next time that I use it, but I'm about to make this long ass trip. And I swear to God, if I get there and they don't have it in the store, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and tell myself that's what's going to happen because I think it is what's going to happen because it says it's available in store, but like, why is it the only one that says that? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, we are going to hopefully go purchase this book. I'm going to let the sun shine in the day. I'm trying to make this darkness go away. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my lungs give out. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my windows open so that I can hear the sound of people talking and the wind blowing in the trees. That is so cute. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. Oh, and the darkness starts to fade. Feels like things are gonna go my way. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I'm gonna let the past be filled with smoke. I will try to fix what has been broken And take this weight off my shoulders Cause I know yesterday ain't coming back mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold I will listen to the ocean That it's unsaid, words be spoken And I'll let my mind be carried by the waves I'm sad. I'm sad. I went in there at like six o'clock and it's 8.15. I looked for over two hours trying to find this book because it says online that there is one copy. And I asked, I went and looked in the horror section, couldn't find it. And I asked three different employees and all three of them looked it up on the computer and was like, yeah, we have it. Like the copy's somewhere here. And all three of them went and looked for it and no one could find it. And I was like, where the... Where is it? I looked in every section. I looked in romance. Like I was all over the map, could not find it. So of course I had to buy a couple books to 
lighten the load volume one of moriarty the patriot and i'm excited to read this too because i believe brie from luck Botition was saying this was like her new favorite series um it's a little beat up and like the spine could look better but like it was the only one and there was quite a few first volumes that i wanted to get that they didn't have like i wanted to get chainsaw man i wanted to get kaiju um and there's something else but they didn't have it but they had volume one of this shockingly so pick that up and i thought about getting um the missing volume four of the promised neverland that i don't have but i'm really struggling with like whether or not i want to like have completed series of manga or if i just want to have the first like first volume or the first three volumes and just to display on my shelf because i feel like having 20 volumes of the promised neverland might be like a little much but i don't know i'm struggling with what to do with that and then i did a poll on my instagram asking if Vinland Saga, um, Sweat and Soap, and Goodnight Poon Poon, I was like, are any of these, like, do you think this is my thing or not? And I was shocked. I was shocked with the um, honesty because a lot of times people, they just say yes. Like, y'all will just say yes because you want to see me buy books, which, like, I can understand. I'm sure I've done that too. But um, uh, Vinland Saga, it was, like, 82% of people saying, like, no, it's probably not for you. And then Sweat and Soap, it was, like, 65% of people saying it's not for you. So, love the honesty. But 95% of people said that I should pick up Goodnight Poon Poon. This is not a cheap manga. I'm gonna tell you that. It's not cheap. And they only had um, volume one. So, I was like, are they at volume one and volume seven, I think. So, this is the Omnibus volume one. And I've heard this makes people cry. I don't know. I've heard it's really sad. And it's literally, like, um, wrapped because it has such explicit content. And I'm like... Okay. Anyway, I didn't read any while I was walking around, but obviously I'm going to listen to my audiobook as I head home. I'm sad. Okay, let's make this hour long trek back to my apartment. Hello. It is like two, three days later. I don't know. The um, prime delivery times. So I finally got the package. This says that it is Mary by Nat Cassidy. So I wanted to open it with you even though it is 1 a.m. or like 12.45 or something, so I'm probably not gonna start it tonight. I say that, I don't know. But I wanted to open it with you. Oh, damn, this is pretty. This is pretty, oh shit. Okay, yeah, so the spine is not aligned properly. Got a big gap here, but you know what? It's fine, it's cute. Look at this. This is a floppy boy, let me tell you. And damn, they were not scrimping. There's a lot of words on these page, my fella. <gasps> that's the shortest chapter I've ever seen. Oh no, that's not a chapter. God damn it. <sighs> I'm stupid. Okay, wait, what are these black pages? <gasps> that's stunning. Mary Mary, quite extraordinary. How does your no novel grow? With pillowcases hiding sliced off faces and porcelain dolls all in a row. With an, oh my God, with an acidic sense of humor more barbed than any cactus, Mary is a perfect blend of Stephen King's Dolores Claiborne and Frank D. Felita's Audrey Rose. I'm already in love. So I think that I am probably not going to read it tonight, but I'm going to hit you back up when I've read the first 15 pages and hopefully be able to tell you what this book is about. My blood sugar is getting kind of high. It's like 200 with like an arrow going to this, you know, going up. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to jump on my treadmill, but I want to physically read this. I'll see because I've heard that the ending gets kind of slow. So I might pick up the audio for that, but I want to physically read this. So I'm going to jump on my treadmill and hopefully read, like, I don't know how long these chapters are, but hopefully read the first chapter and then pop in with Maybe not what it's about, because I honestly don't know what it's about. And I don't think the first chapter is going to lay it out for me. But oh my god. What? Do you see the hand? That is not her. The fuck? It, what? Uh, <laughs> had to share that. Anyway, that freaked me out. Okay, uh, so I don't know how long these chapters are, but I'm going to read the first chapter hopefully and then get back to you with at least what I'm thinking about the writing style.
hi, I'm coming at you hours and hours later because I did walk on my treadmill for half an hour and then I laid on my living room floor for a while reading this book. But because my blood sugar was high, I just got like such a terrible headache. So I was just like laying on the ground doing nothing for a very long time. And then I ended up just like walking around my apartment doing nothing. And I played some games on my phone. And now I'm here to talk about this. So I read more than the first chapter. The chapters are blessedly a lot shorter than I thought. So I read five chapters and there's also a um, like prologue. So we start in April 20, 1969. And then where I am right now is April 9th, 2019. So this is very interesting. Like it is like slow and creepy and like not just creepy eerie is not a good enough word this shit is spooky dokey it is scary airy scary wary airy it is so spooky ooky i there are there are so many things in the book where i'm like no 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 i'll show my fucking self out matt cassidy i'll show myself out because you're not going to show yourself out bitch this is about a girl named mary Okay. Now, do I actually completely understand what's happening? Absolutely not. I doubt I will until the very end. So I feel like everything I'm going to talk about right now is not spoilery because one, um, I didn't read the summary, but then when I read the last line of the summary, I was like, okay, you just spoiled something for me. So everything's in the summary, basically, even more than I've read so far. So basically in the very beginning, we are following a sheriff. Like this is in like the 19, whatever the fuck. We're following a sheriff who gets a call to go to this house and they find six women that have been like brutally murdered in this mansion. And the seventh body is of, is that a spoiler? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. I don't think it's a spoiler, but who cares? Um, the seventh body is of somebody who they realize was either in on it or at least knew what was happening. And it really shakes up the entire town. So, um, not because not only than that, but there's also been like, I think they said 19, like other dead women that have been found throughout the past couple of years in the exact same way. And they're like, Oh, we found the guy, we found him. And the sheriff's like, where is he? And he's hearing this like high pitch, crazy laughter. And the other cops are like, he's in the walls. And the, I don't know how, but the dude's in the walls. Like he's in the walls, like singing this creepy ass song. And then as the sheriff like has a heart attack, he starts singing the song. And then it says like at another part of town, there is a woman giving birth weeks early. And the doctor's like, oh, well, I guess she just wanted to come into the world. Cue our entrance of Mary. That little girl is Mary. Something real fucking weird happens when she's six years old. I was like, Child Protective Services should have been called because not that she wasn't being taken care of, but they, she needs to go to an asylum. Mary needs to be put away. She needs to be put away. So we follow that and then we jump forward to 2019 where she's like just a couple weeks away from being 50. And she goes to see a doctor and says like, listen, um, I'm having like insane hot flashes, like more so than I feel like hot flashes should be. I can't sleep. Like um, she, like there's all these things she can't do. She gets incredibly angry. She will like forget things. And she said, uh, well, she doesn't tell him about the mirror thing. So he says, oh, it's just uh, menopause. It's menopause. It's like textbook. It's so normal. And she's like, bitch, I know my body. Even if it is menopause, it's not even on steroids. Like, it's like elite menopause supremacy. Like, she's like, there's something going on, bitch. And he doesn't believe her. Sends her home. She doesn't have health insurance, so she can't afford to go to a gynecologist. She can't afford to go to another doctor. Now, here's what we find out. Is what she doesn't tell the doctor is that every time she looks in a mirror or a reflective surface, surface, she sees herself at first normal and then quickly starts to decompose and rot away and, like, die in front of her eyes. And she passes out. And whenever she looks at women that are around the same age as her or are middle age, she sees them also decomposing and dying. Now, anyone that's younger than that threshold, over that threshold, or is a man, they look totally normal to her. But anything else, cut the clip, dead, deceased, on arrival, disgusting. And the descriptiveness, Nat Cassidy, he's a sick bitch. He is a sick bitch. It's disgusting. Like, literally, the quotes that Jordaline reads out, I'm like, oh my god horrifying but then also she has these she's living alone and this is a lot of talk on misogyny and uh ableism and ageism like there's a lot of social political things that are being brought up, brought up that are 
you know, unsettling to hear, but I will say that Nat Cassidy has an author's note that I read in the beginning that he goes through like all of the triggering content. Like if you want to know at the very end of his author's note, he goes through all of the triggering content and says like, um, that he's grateful for his sensitivity readers who helped lessen the blow of things that he did not realize were being um, seen through his writing. And I really respect that, especially because this is a man writing a point of view of a 50 year old woman who is feeling beaten down by misogyny and age and like the ageism of society and all these different things. So it's very interesting for a man to be writing that. But as of right now, I'm really loving the way he's writing it. I have not read anything and I'm only 30 pages in, but I haven't read anything that has skeeved me out with this being a man writing it. Like if I had not read Nat Cassidy, I would have thought Nat was short for like Natalie or something. Like I would have thought that it was a woman. So he's doing great on that end. But the one thing I want to say is that she has Mary, our dear, terrifying Dolores Claiborne lookalike Mary. Uh, she has a bunch of creepy ass dolls, a bunch of dolls, and she calls them, them her loved ones. And she talks to them like they're real people and it's fucking scary. Okay. Anyway, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to read any more of this tonight and then I'll hit you back up tomorrow, hopefully with some reading sprints and getting more of this read. It is the next day and I actually have an amazing update. So I got to page 154 last night on those reading sprints. Well, I mean, I technically I read like one or two chapters just now, like was doing my makeup, stopping reading, doing my makeup, stopping reading. Um, I am really digging this. I'm really digging it. This kind of has a little bit of a similar writing style to like T. King Fisher, not as comedic as, as T. King Fisher, but like the relationship of the woman with the dog, the relationship of the woman with like other characters, and then also like the portrayal of the way that women are treated in different, uh, well, with T. King Fisher, it's usually like some sort of fantastical world, but in this, it's our modern day world, is so good. And like, okay, so this is what's going on, is that at the beginning of the story, I think I already told you this. I hope I already told you this. Oh my God. <sighs> Pass Katie. Get it together. Um, about the, all the deaths that were happening, like all the women that were being found with the pillowcases over their head. Well, our main character, Mary, is seeing like a woman with a pillowcase over her head. And now it's like, you're almost trying to figure out like, why is she seeing this? Like she technically, when she was a child, was the child that was born on that day, but she doesn't know that or like hasn't, I mean, it hasn't been brought up. Like, how would you not know that? It's your birthday. Hmm, that's actually interesting. Anyway, um, it's kind of being alluded to that maybe she is like, she might be possessed. She might be a reincarnation of one of his victims. Like, uh, she might be a reincarnation of like this demon spirit that was in this guy. I don't know. It's very interesting and I'm really liking it. And I really like, there's a character that has just recently come in, Eleanor, and she's a young girl who is really interested in like true crime, crime podcasts and is like, oh my God, I want to help you figure this out. And the way that Mary reacts to her, like she's so desperate for like female friendship that Eleanor is like so cute and pretty and like um, adorable, like a doll, like one of her loved ones. So she, and Eleanor seems like a good person and like wants to help her. But then Mary is looking at her like, you're pretty and like young and nice. Like, why would you ever want anything to do with me? Because she has so much past trauma from like how much she was bullied. And this, if I had not told you before, this is like a direct homage to Carrie and how much this author loved that movie and book. And you can definitely tell like the way the people in her hometown, like the girls that she went to school with, the way that they bullied her is like exactly the way that Carrie was bullied. And if you've read that book or seen that movie, the locker room scene, like when they're all taking showers, dude, it, that's, that's bullying on steroids, y'all. Like that's a female experience, you know what I'm saying? So if you can picture that, you can picture what Mary's gone through. So she's going back to this hometown and seeing all these women who used to make fun of her and bully her and harass her so much she had to move out of the state. And so she's like not trusting anything. She's like super paranoid. 
And also she's sleep deprived and like possibly demonically possessed. I don't know. I'm just ranting. Anyway, I am this far through and I'm freaking loving it. And I'm hoping I need to film a video today, but I need to film a video. But after that, I want to do some reading sprints and get hopefully way farther into this book. I'm here to wrap up and review Mary. Okay. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this book. I really do. Some of the things I love. Love how floppy the book is. I love how short the chapters are. I really found Mary's point of view to be very interesting and very realistic. And the homage to Carrie, somebody who loved the book Carrie and loved the movie, I really, really liked getting like an adult point of view from her and how her life would have been if that bullying had not been ended by obviously what happens in Carrie. We're not going to go into it, but um, if it had not been ended and she had continued to live her life in that shadow of other women and placed upon her by men and society. So that was very interesting to me. I do love how gory this is and how descriptive it is in its goriness. Like my favorite scene, I feel like, is the little girl with the bugs coming out of her mouth, like the insect coming out of her mouth. Oh my God. I was like, this would make the best horror movie. Like, oh my God, this makes such a good movie. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, stunning. Like, somebody has got to buy the rights to this and make it a movie. Please. And it's got to be like a horror, like true horror. And I'm not like a big, like, I don't like jump scares, but this shit, this psychological shit, I would be there for that. Would love it. Um, so I really liked that. I know that everybody has said it, but it's true. The book is too long. It's way too damn long. This book, the audiobook, is 16 hours long. The fuck? This book is 400 pages for a horror novel? Ah, I don't know. So for the last third of this book, I just kind of got, got tired. I got a little bit bored or like it got repetitive. It got a little ridiculous and it was just exhausting being in Mary's head because Everything that she's bringing up about like misogyny and the way that men will like put her down, put her aside, step in front of her, the way that she looks at her body, the way that other people look at her body, the way that like she thinks about food, the way she thinks about clothes and makeup and other women and girls and people that are older than her, all of this stuff and like money problems, like job problems, um, house problems, like all this different stuff. These are all things that women deal with every single day and they're all real and I enjoyed the representation of each of them but it was too much it was too much there was way too much happening I love that Nat Cassidy wanted to write this wrote it and wrote it with in my opinion such deep sensitivity like I'm blown away that this was written by a man blown away because it didn't feel like a dude being like oh my god I'm like such a nice guy like oh my god I totally get women it was him being like yeah, I don't get it, but I'm trying and this sucks for y'all. So I really enjoyed that, but he went too far in that field. You know what I'm saying? Like there was just too many issues that were brought up to try to understand. I'm like, we got it. You could have cut like 50 to 70 pages out of this book. And also the ending, I can't even like, literally I'm sitting here like, how did it even end? I just remember being like, that was so convoluted because it doesn't, it, it ends like very poetic. Like, oh, we're all an unfinished sentence. Okay. Um, so I think I'm going to give it, I was going to give it three stars, but literally the gore is so good. I want to give it three and a half stars. I have to give it three and a half because the half star is because of Nat Cassidy's depiction of women's struggles in all areas of life and also the goriness. So I'm going to give it three and a half stars. If you've gotten this far into the video, leave the bathtub emoji. And if you want to follow me on Patreon, Instagram, or Goodreads, those links are going to be down below. And you know, it's also down below the subscribe button, if you feel like it, <laughs> or the like button. If you want to like this video, that would be sick. Thanks. And I hope that all of you are having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having in whatever part of the world you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye.